She poses as a teen online and online seduces what she believes to be another teen. Pictured here, this is the photo he used online. He's actually a 46 year old Sunday school teacher, a father of two and very much married. We are taking your calls to Dr. Bethany Marshall. Before I can unleash a lawyer, I think we need to shrink. Help me out, Bethany. <laughs> You could say what you want on the internet. So I told her I was 18. The internet became his world. It allowed him to be something that he wasn't. It would lead to a two year affair, a love triangle, and more. If I was smart, I would have just done it, but it was like a drug that I needed every day. God loved the internet. That handsome Marine in dress blues is actually 46-year-old Thomas Montgomery, a family man stuck in his dead-end job as a machinist. It was slowly sucking the life out of me. He wanted to avoid the monotony. He went online where nothing's what it seems and for some, it's all a big playground at their disposal. But as they say every man has a fool up his sleeve. This is your host Amanda and today we learn everything about internet relationships and dating. Tal Hochtblend is a 2009 documentary directed by Barbara Schroeder. It details an internet love triangle which resulted in a real-life murder. Thomas Montgomery, a 47-year-old married man, pleaded guilty to murdering his 22-year-old co-worker Brian Barrett. The two men were involved in a love triangle with Jesse, who they thought to be an 18-year-old girl with a screen named Hal Hotblend. While both men knew each other from work, neither had ever met Jesse in person. In the beginning of their online relationship, Thomas presented himself as an 18-year-old man named Tommy who was in basic training and later deployed. His wife later discovered the affair and revealed the truth to Jesse, but the two continued to chat. However, while Jesse was a real person, Thomas had been chatting with her mother, Mary Sheeler, posing as her daughter online. Jesse was unaware of her mother's actions until after Barrett was murdered and her mother's role in the case became public. There's a place where the games never stop and everything looks like a huge playground, that place is the internet. Nevertheless, these games don't always end up well, and as they say, when you lose something, don't lose the lesson. This video presentation is not intended to analyze the forbidden needs and emotional aspects involved in the phenomenon of catfishing and it's rather a set of measures for the many people who have begun an internet relationship which might prove to be just another dramatic catfish story. So how do you make sure you're not going to be the next victim of a catfish? The elusive woman earning the nickname, the ghost of Easterville. Shelly is the perfect example of what happens when you mix isolation, boredom, obsession, insecurity, and you create a catfish who has the potential to destroy people's lives. Use Google reverse image search to look up if the photos or videos provided or posted on social media profiles are genuine or they are stolen. Also, the date of the posting might be relevant in some way. Use a webcam and rush up the audio-video interactions. If this is not possible, don't allow your romantic relationship to evolve. Most likely, the other person's looks are important for you. Require access to live image and become suspicious if, under different pretexts, this is not possible. 
insist. Ask for a tour. Having access to the webcam, be curious about the place and location. Politely ask for a tour of the room and even a view outside the window. Don't forget to save at least one print screen for later. Avoid long distance. Avoid internet relationships with people who are located at the other end of the world. If you do get involved in such relationships, take responsibility and accept the possibility that you began a risky relationship which justifiably hinders face-to-face -face encounters and thus evolution. Extend your network. It is of critical importance in any relationship, to have common friends and no relatives, mates or colleagues of your significant other. Your significant other doesn't have a decent reason to forbid it unless they've told you lies or try to hide uncomfortable truths. Do not settle for just one common friend or relative as they could be just another false identity of the same catfish. If the relationship becomes serious or you feel a great deal of interest for this potential partner, don't forget to check those identities using the same previously presented steps. Check the information. If you manage to make two or three friends who personally know your internet lover, you want to ask them meaningful questions. At this point, these relationships are just as important if not more so. Become suspicious and take responsibility for a risky relationship if knowing the relatives and friends is not possible. Nobody's that lonely nor should they be. Mark your territory. Sending material gifts by post, mainly those with sexual connotations as lingerie or personal clothes has been proven to be a wise decision because they are likely to be found by the probable real sexual partners of your internet lover. Face-to-face -face encounters. You should make efforts to rush up the moment of your first real-life encounter with your internet lover. Do not accept any excuses and if you do, take responsibility for the risky relationship that you're involved in. If these are some of the very wise measures that you can take before the real-life encounter, the actual meeting is nonetheless problematic. There's still a strong possibility that the stranger has doubtful intentions even though if you followed the steps they were drastically decreased. Though she expresses some remorse, incredibly Shelley blames Paris for falling for the scam. Most people would also ask to talk to the person they're going to see. To, On the phone? Yeah, or Skype them or something. They don't just fly somewhere and not know this person. So you're saying that's sort of on her, that she went to go see him without knowing who he was? Yeah. Here are a few measures you may consider before the meeting that will transform your internet lover into a potential real-life partner. The when. A reasonable time for the first face-to-face -face encounter would be three months after the beginning of the internet relationship. You had this time to make confessions and simulate a real-life relationship but that's it. Do not accept a continuation after the three months limit if you believe in this relationship and intend to bring it to real life. Do not go alone. Especially if you are a woman, do not go unattended at the first real-life encounter. If this is uncomfortable for you or not possible, then make sure that somebody knows where you are. Ask for a selfie. Accepting a selfie together is a proof of openness, friendship and honesty and other people will know that a much wanted rendezvous has taken place, you are safe and, moreover, they'll know that you have a good time. Ask for the selfie minutes into the meeting, as soon as possible. Saved by the bell. A frequent technique of getting away in time involves asking a friend to call you 15 minutes into your romantic meeting and thus provide you with an excellent reason to leave if the things don't pan out as planned and the disappointment is too big. The where. For the first face-to-face -face encounter never choose intimate places like hotel rooms, homes, parks, empty parking, secluded picnic spots empty restaurants, 
which look like and could always become potential crime scenes. Choose instead commercial areas, shopping malls, coffee shops which are more suitable for such occasions. Also, if you are a woman, you shouldn't accept a meeting in cities other than your own. The gentleman should have the decency, the availability and the courage to come to your town or city. Moreover, you don't have to ensure accommodation, he will get by. Delay the sexual relations. You should become suspicious if your internet lover puts pressure on you to accompany them to a surprise place only known by them, where you could enjoy intimacy. That's an unacceptable risk at your first romantic encounter. Moreover, if you dine together, it's desirable to leave separately after the first encounter. The turn-offs. If you have the revelation that the person you've just met is not the one that you're expected to meet and certain gestures or details have turned you off, try to keep your composure and not make a big deal out of it. Go to the restroom instead where you can call a cab. But if such details could be ignored, you can kindly bring in to notice that, for instance, the photo was a bit old, since the times when his belly wasn't that big and he didn't have a double chin or a receding hairline. Escape the trap. If things don't work out as expected, if you realize that the photo didn't fit reality and the guy smells bad or he's a genuine redneck and puts pressure on you to follow him somewhere. You want to have some cash so you can escape the danger in a timely fashion. They say trust takes years to build, seconds to break and a whole life to repair. You don't have to become paranoid just to make sure that you're protected against imposture but a little caution is always needed in order to save your time and feelings. Oftentimes, a little caution is necessary if you want to save important things like your physical integrity, your reputation, your belongings or even your life. scarring I guess like on Paris but yet you continue to go back and forth mm -hmm. how come because I'm stupid just plain and simple